I want to talk about. I want to talk about. Hang on. This lady. Who knows who Kathy Barnett is? Has anyone watched this lady? I had no idea. So apparently she's running um, in Pennsylvania. She's running for like Senate in Pennsylvania or something. And I never heard of this lady until last night because it's Pennsylvania. Like, why would I why would I watch something that's going on in Pennsylvania? But I have to say, I was really excited. So Mike Cernovich tweeted this out last night. And he said, wow, who's this? Check out this commercial. I am you, Pennsylvania. <laughs> and like you, I believe this is the greatest country that has ever existed. But like you, I believe our country is in trouble. I believe that the America that allowed me to claw my way out of dire poverty is about to come to a close. Listen, this time you do not have to hold your nose and vote for the lesser of two evils. I am in a statistical tie for first place. So voting for me is not throwing your vote away. Listen, go to my Facebook page at Kathy Barnett for Senate, and you will see exactly what I'm doing today that I will amp up tomorrow after this race. I have been going and you will see me in rooms full of black people changing their voter registration from Democrat to Republican. You will see me downtown in Chinatown. They are mine. You will see people ushering me in front of a room full of Amish people with them introducing me as someone with their values. Not only do I have a grasp on our own base, but I can go into every nook and cranny and take the votes that we need in order to really beat Fetterman in the general election. So let's go do this. Dude, where the hell has she been? Where in the hell has she been? Why haven't the GOP been talking about her? Why? I feel like they've just been complaining about like Dr. Oz in Pennsylvania for like ever. Why haven't they been talking about her? That was fantastic. She's actually showing that she's going out and doing things like why is this the first time that i've heard of her what is going on and this is not the only thing she has i want to watch her ad i actually haven't seen this ad yet but i want to watch it i just need to set it up real quick do, 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 do. i'm going to do a live reaction to this ad it's from kathy barnett she's at kathy for truth i'm the byproduct of rape my mother was 11 when i was conceived in the world the left desires i never would have been born we need leaders with a steady hand to direct our nation through these difficult decisions now this might be confusing to people because again i'm obviously pro-choice i am obviously very against the republicans fucking around with roe i think that's been absolutely disastrous and i think it's going to be even more disastrous in the coming months however that doesn't mean I won't support pro-life people. It doesn't mean I think that pro-life positions are a reasonable position to have. What I do not support is pro-life for NPCs, which basically are pod people that are no different than work woke fucking leftists that can't have any conversation about any reasonable solution to this at all. That just come in and demand and demand and demand and scream and cry when you don't give them their way and they just say the same thing over and over and over again, no matter what you say. They think women should be strapped down to gurneys to be used as human incubators. They completely dismiss. They completely dismiss people who've been raped. By the way, it's just like they're awful, awful people. But that doesn't mean I don't think that there are good people with reasonable pro-life positions. And if there are good people with reasonable pro-life positions who are also going to fight, who are also actually going to get off the couch and do something, then I am pretty actually likely to support those people. So let's hear, let's hear what Kathy has to say in this here ad. I grew up in Southern Alabama, very rural, one-stop sign town called Nitchburg. Getting ready to go to college, I decided to go into the Army Reserves, but I had to go get my birth certificate, mainly because the name was different. The name I had always grown up with was Nelson, but then come to find out there was something completely different on my birth certificate. Clearly, I could have done the math and realized just how young my mother was when she gave birth to me, but it was never something that truly resonated with me until I looked at my birth certificate for the very first time and just kind of studied it. Her gender, they called her a Negro girl, and that was the first thing I saw, and it just kind of grabbed my heart. But then I saw her age, and she was 12. And that just really struck a chord in me because I realized just how young 
my mother was when something so horrible had visited upon her. Even to this day, it's a very hard word to say, but my mother was raped. Given her young age, at 11 years old, my father being 21. They was hurt. We was all devastated. But my mother said, you know, you're pregnant, so we're going to get through this. And she helped me get through it. I don't want to use the word choice. She was going to be born. I didn't have a choice to say, you're going to live, or I'm going to abort you. That wasn't a choice for me. And I thank God it wasn't a choice for me. As a child, I knew no difference. I was loved and um, I felt loved. It gave me a greater appreciation for my mother. It helped me to forgive a lot of the mistakes someone at that age, having gone through such trauma, would have made in their own parenting. But it definitely made me become very adamant about the sanctity of life, of all life, regardless of their conception, regardless of how they arrived, that I am <laughs> valuable, I'm worthy, and my life has purpose. Before the foundation of the world, God saw me and he decided that I would be. And he said in his word that not only did I see you, but I called you, I predestined you. And so as a Christian, I believe in the value of life, that when I was in my mother's womb, he was knitting me together. Even among Christians, even among staunch conservatives, an exception to the rule of being pro-life for many is in the case of rape. And yet my life has value. From me has come two very beautiful and charming and smart kids married to a wonderful husband. We've made a life for ourselves and none of this would have happened if the exception to the rule had applied regardless of how old you are and how the child was conceived, that child deserved a chance. And if I had made that choice, where would I be at right now without my daughter? The hardest struggle for my mother, or the hardest thing for her to overcome, I think is just the effects of the trauma itself. And that is why I think it's so important to help people understand that the trauma has already been inflicted. The child should not be inflicted with the consequences that squarely belongs on the one who inflicted the trauma. We have to be able to see the difference. Aborting me would not have eased the trauma that my mother suffered. Aborting me would not have allowed me to be in a place today where I can now take care of my mother. It's just amazing to see them grow up. Regardless of how my life started out, I'm blessed. I'm not left with bitterness. I'm left with overwhelming sense of gratitude that not only did God see value in my life, but that my family saw value in my life. I'm very grateful for that. I'm eternally grateful that they chose to allow me to be born. If conservatives want to end abortion, this is how they do it. If pro-lifers really want to end abortion or reduce abortion, this is how they should do it. By changing minds, by telling stories, by changing hearts, by articulating their values. That's how they should do it. That's the productive thing that they should have been focused on all along. In some respects, you know, what we just saw was an extremely powerful story. And again, I don't know why Kathy hasn't gotten more GOP support. It breaks my heart that she hasn't gotten more GOP support because she gets it. She gets it. Incognito says Republicans support her. She connects with mothers. She should have already she should have already gotten a lot more. Like she should have been all over the place. I'm sorry. I should have heard of her before last night. We all. I mean, I know many people did. Obviously, I'm a little late. Like some people were ahead of me. But here's the thing. What Republicans have defaulted to doing is trying to do this through legislation and doing it by demanding demanding other people listen to them and other people see the world that they do. And if they don't, if you don't see the world that they, the way they do, they want to force you to. 
what Kathy has just shown us is that there are many other ways to achieve the goal. There are many other ways that are significantly more effective than forcing your will on other people. You know, a lot of people say, and I tend to agree with this, the battle that we're fighting right now is not really left versus right. It's authoritarian versus libertarian. And there are authoritarians on the left and there are authoritarians on the right. And I quite frankly view people who want to regulate what people do with their bodies as authoritarians. Every single individual is going to suffer the consequences of their decisions, either through karma, which is what I believe, or, or you know, for Christians, after they die. Every single person is going to suffer the consequences of their decisions in this regard. But trying to pass laws that tell other people what they can and cannot do with their body is wrong from my perspective. It's an authoritarian measure, and it's not even going to reduce abortions. It never has. If you really want to reduce abortions, you need to tell more stories. You need to do what Kathy just did. That single ad would probably be more effective at reducing abortions than any law the Republicans could ever pass. Because if someone wants to get an abortion, they're going to figure it out. They're going to find a way. There were abortions before they were legal. But what you want to be doing is teaching people that perspective. And I'm saying that as someone who I believe, I believe in the exception. I do not believe that women who are raped should be forced to have the child of their rapist. But I can also acknowledge stories like Kathy's and like her mother's where some of those women do make that choice because that's what choice means. You can make the choice to do it or you can make the choice not to do it. And if conservatives were serious about saving babies, protecting the unborn, this is where they should be focusing their energy. It actually kind of, frankly, infuriates me that the GOP has not invested a metric F ton of money in airing that ad nationally. That's frustrating to me. And I say that as someone that's pro-choice. That's frustrating to me that they haven't done that because I think that that ad and that story are beautiful and they should be seen by as many eyes as possible. AD, we will never end abortion. It's like an as- I, I don't it's asymptote, asymptote, get closer to zero, but never quite there. I don't know that word. AD knows all the fancy words. I don't know that word. I don't know all the words in the world, guys. Jared said, she should not have been born in the eyes of the left. The left, left loves personal struggle, but once you overcome it, you, you are wasted on them. That's a story that should be told too, Jared. I agree with you. The world is a better place because Kathy is in it. It is. She seems like a really nice lady. She seems like she's got a great family. It seems like she ha- is a leader. She's, she wants to help people. It seems like she has a genuine desire to serve. This is a beautiful story that could be used over and over and over again to actually change minds. God, the fucking right frustrates me so much. They have every single thing that they need. And they just flatly refuse to use it. They flatly refuse. Well, here's hope Kathy wins the primary. That'd be pretty great. Who is, did Trump endorse, is she actually running against Dr. Oz? Is that who she's running against? Did Trump endorse Oz? God damn, Trump is an idiot. Yeah, Emily says it's the same when conservatives fight against sex ed in schools, something that would help and they don't want. That's exactly right, Emily. It's like if you're serious about reducing the number of abortions, you need to reduce the number of unwanted pregnancies and you know it can do that. Condoms. That story going viral would help more than standing on a corner and yelling at someone. That story would help more 
than calling someone a baby killer or insulting someone. That story was more effective than every single pro-life NPC I have ever encountered on Twitter, and I've encountered thousands of them. This is a lesson that the right needs to learn at some point, and I fear they aren't going to learn it soon enough. That if they're serious about achieving their goals, if they actually care about the goals, they need to be strategic in how they're fighting and insulting people and calling them names like libtard and baby killer and abortionist. Like doing that is not going to change anyone's mind. It, It literally zero minds are changed. But a story like that, that changes people's minds. Why didn't Trump endorse her? God, Trump is such an idiot who gets bad advice. Trump makes smart decisions sometimes, but he gets horrible, awful advice from horrible, awful advisors.